Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. My name is Ryan, and today I'm going to show you how to replace the front coilovers on a four wheel drive 2014 Ram 1500. So, this is something you could totally do in your driveway, it is not that difficult at all. Uh, you just need a jack and a couple jack stands. I will leave links down below in the descriptions to all applicable things here today. Now before we go any further, I want to mention that the coilovers that are on it currently are not stock. There's some aftermarket company, I'm unsure which one, but the removal process is exactly the same. And then our replacement units are also aftermarket. Those are made by King right here in the United States. They're very, very high end and they're pretty darn expensive, but I will leave the stock ones down below. All you need to know is the process is exactly the same and I left the torque specs for the stock stuff in the video. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump in. Alrighty, so our first step to removing our uh, coilover is to disconnect our upper control arm, our tie rod, and our sway bar. Now, you might notice that these coilovers are not the stock ones, but they bolt up exactly the same as stock. So just follow along as if these were stock, or if you have some aftermarket ones that go in just like stock, this applies to you as well. And our upper control arm is not stock either, it's tubular, but the process is exactly the same. Uh, in fact, you could just have the regular stock upper control arm and it'd be exactly the same. The first thing we're gonna remove is the sway bar and this nut here. What we're gonna do is hit that with a little WD-40, loosen it up a little bit for us. Now, the way you take this off is with a 16 millimeter deep well. I guess you could use a wrench if you really wanted to. And you put it on top of there and then you grab a 15 millimeter wrench and you can hold the sway bar link like this while you're removing it so it doesn't just spin. Usually you can just break it loose, but if it starts spinning, go ahead and hold it with the wrench again. The reason we're doing this one first is because we don't want all that force on uh, the smaller fastener and this is the smallest one we're gonna be dealing with today um, when it comes to letting the suspension loose. So we wanna get that one done first. There we go. Remove our bushing and washer and see how nice and free that is? Perfect. So here's where our tie rod connects to our spindle. We're gonna go ahead and again hit it with some WD-40. Perfect. And don't worry about the mess, we'll clean that up later. Let that soak for a minute. This will make taking that knot off a lot easier. Normally I'd use a 21 millimeter socket on an impact gun, but I don't have that socket, so we're gonna use a wrench. Luckily it's not on terribly tight. Perfect. So sometimes, because these are a tapered fit on this ball joint here, sometimes what you have to do is you'd leave this nut on to protect the threads and you just apply pressure, you know, wedge like a big pry bar in between here and here. And then you just smack this surface right here with a hammer and then they just fall right out. But this one, I mean, geez, came out like butter. I'm okay with that. And again, we can hit that with some WD-40 on our upper control arm nut. And this one again is 21 millimeters. Again, I would normally use like a breaker bar or an impact gun, but I don't have that uh, luxury here today. I noticed on top here for our tubular control arm, they actually have a 12 point socket that is 13 millimeter. So I can hold it by vent while trying to remove it. The stock probably doesn't have that, but if it does do what I'm doing, if not, you can just break it loose like normal. This is just gonna make it a little easier for me. <coughs> <coughs> So this taper fits in there pretty good, so we're gonna have to apply some pressure. Let's get a large prying implement and put it in between there. And then grab a hammer and smack this surface right here. There we go. Sometimes it helps if you have one person prying and the other person hammering, but I don't have that luxury today. And then we can just remove the nut the rest of the way. We can just lift this up. Now, when you do this, you see these cables over here. This is the brake line, an ABS reluctor cable. Make sure it's not hanging by that. You can tie it in such a way with like a zip tie over to where the bump stop mount is. 
In fact, we're gonna do that right now. So what I've done is grabbed like four or five zip ties and zip tied it around the frame part here where that control arm and bump stop mounts to. There's a little hole there, you can fish that through. And so all the tension for the spindle is on these zip ties and not on the brake line. See how the brake line's nice and loosey-goosey? So is the ABS reluctor wire. See how this is nice and loose? You can even go tighter if you want. Nice and loose. You don't want any of that uh, tension being solely on the brake line. That could be bad. So, and you can undo this clip here for the ABS wire, and this enables the upper control arm to swing up and out of your way. All right, now we can remove the lower uh, nut for the coilover. Again, a little bit of WD-40 to help us out. Perfect. We're gonna back that bolt head on the back with a 21 millimeter wrench back here. And then the nut is 24. Perfect. I have a brass hammer. Just tap that out. Excellent. Here's what our bolt looks like. We can set that aside. So where you're looking now is the top of the coilover. There are three 14 millimeter bolts that you could get through the side with a wrench and just do undo them slowly. But I also noticed you could get on top uh, through the engine bay and get at them a little bit easier. These suckers were on tight too. I actually had to get a breaker bar and take them off and these are uh, not 14 millimeter like I thought because um, that's what it says on the stock one. So you might have different, might be 13 or 14. These are actually 9 16 which is odd, American sizing on a modern car, um, because this is uh, an actually aftermarket uh, suspension. I'm taking off aftermarket suspension to put on more aftermarket suspension. If you ask me, the stock stuff is the best, but that's just me. And I will leave links down below in the description to all the stock stuff. But the process is identical. I'm pretty sure with the stock ones, you get new uh, top bolts. I think it's nuts, actually. I think they're nuts on it's nuts on studs. So you should get new nuts. If you do, just use the new ones. All right, this should give us enough leeway. There we go, just enough room. So now is usually the part I point out that you want to make your stock suspension match. Your stock suspension makes sure the same length and uh, bounce rate and all of that and the rest of it. That kind of gets thrown out the window here because we're going from an aftermarket suspension unit to another one. You can see why we replaced this one. The shock inside is leaking all over the place. Look at all that. Yuck. So that's junk, which doesn't surprise me. Aftermarket stuff just kind of tends to do that unless you spend really big money, which is what this is. This is actually custom built by King in the United States. It is a very high-end, very expensive aftermarket unit. Uh, I don't recommend using this for your average job because you're not gonna need or use it. Um, if you do go for something like this though, note that it matters which side which one goes on, like right here on this tag, kind of tough to see, but it says left, and left is relative to where the driver is sitting. So this is our driver front, which is what we're working on. Again, I will leave the stock replacement units in the description down below. But we're gonna be putting these bad boys in today. All right, now we can replace our coil over here. There we go. I need a little jiggling, a little convincing. And again, if you have a fancy pants aftermarket unit like this, make sure you have the correct one on the correct side like this one is. So now we can replace our lower coilover bolt, but what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put it in there and start the nut on there, but not tighten it. If we want it loose, so we have a little bit of play when we're putting in uh, the top bolt. So that's all I'm gonna leave it on for now. So we have this bypass holder that goes on top of the shock tower, and then we're gonna put our replace our bolts on a stop application. I believe it's studs, and then you just put nuts on, and you obviously don't have the reservoir holder. So the reason you leave that lower one loose is so you can kinda jiggle it around a little bit. So you might need to pick up by the bottom of the spindle and lift everything up. 
to get the uh, bolt threads started. Just be careful you're not cross-threading them. So I finally got all these in. Now we just need to tighten them up. On these, don't go super Hulk tight or anything. They're just going into aluminum. You know, just snug is fine. If I find the stock torque spec, I'll leave it, but if you're putting into aftermarket, the stock torque spec's really not gonna work. Perfect. So we have gone ahead and mounted our bypass reservoir, which you're most likely not gonna have using these eight millimeter hose clamps, very easy. And you want the line here to go up and underneath the A-arm so that way when the suspension's working, it doesn't get all caught up. Very cool. And then I found the torque spec for these top bolts on this particular suspension is 35 foot pounds. Uh, that seems about right, but it is going into aluminum. So uh, maybe be at your own discretion there. Snug is perfectly good. So now we're gonna tighten our lower coilover bolt, back it up with a 21 millimeter wrench, use a 24 millimeter socket. And you want that on pretty freaking tight. Uh, maybe grab a breaker bar and really give that a good tightening. Uh, we'll try to find the correct torque spec for you. I can remove our zip tie for our spindle to bring it up a little bit while you bring the upper control arm down. Oh yeah, there we go, perfect. Just like that. Now we can put the nut back on. And again, you want this on pretty tight. If I find a factory torch spec, I will put it on screen. There we go, looks good. Now we can put our tie rod back in its home, perfect replace that nut. And again, these are 21 millimeters. They're pretty beefy, so don't be afraid to torque them on down. Perfect. Now we can replace our sway bar bushing, its top washer, and the 16 millimeter nut that goes on top. In order to get a good, nice tightness on there, you gotta get that 15 millimeter on the shank. Cause then you can really give it a nice snugging. Perfect, and check it out. Our brand new coilover is installed. Luckily, the other side is exactly the same, but flipped. So just do exactly what we did on the driver's side to the passenger side. Thank you so very much for watching. That's how to replace the coilovers for your uh, Ram 1500 four wheel drive. Uh, it's pretty simple, honestly. It's actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. I thought we'd have to, you know, take the lower control arm off, but because of the way Ram did it, it's way easier to take the um, upper control arm off and do it that way. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you next time.